We have, of course, Michael Timberlake joining us from our friends over at Timberlake League and Brooks. And he is going to talk to us about contributory negligence. So welcome back. Yeah, it's a, a contributory negligence is a bit of a mouthful. It is. And it's kind of the own we Alabama is one of the very few states in the nation that provides for contributory negligence. Wow. It is simply just a legal doctrine that says if you cause or contribute to cause to your own injury in any way, then you are barred from recovery, regardless of whether it was somebody else's fault. You know, if it was, if it was 99 percent somebody else's fault, if you contributed to your own injury, you cannot recover under Alabama law. So it, it's a very difficult situation that we face in some um, in, in a lot of different types of cases, um, and it's very fact specific in terms of what did the injured person do to contribute to their own injuries? Um, did, were they going too fast? Were they driving? Um, um, you know, in an, in an irres you know, uh, you know, unreasonably uh, for the conditions. Were they driving with their lights off? Um, you know, did they, you know, get rear-ended, or but did they stop too soon by the person in front of them? Um, you know, those are all the questions that we look at in car wreck cases, and when we're looking at contributory negligence, because it is an absolute bar on recovery and can create create a lot of problems. I could see that. And, sure. and how, how? What are some of the tools that are used to measure? Who would be responsible in some of these cases? I'm just imagining you pull out, somebody pulls out in front of you, you T-bone them, but then if they can figure out in the least way that you are going too fast, mm -hmm. right. you can't collect. Right. Well, you've got to prove, in order to, to prove that, you know, that somebody else contributed, you have to prove that their actions actually uh, you know, mm -hmm. were part of the cause of the wreck. So, you know, if, if you, somebody's going, you know, 50 miles an hour, maybe right. five miles an hour over the speed limit, um, and you pull out in front of them, uh, that five miles an hour wouldn't make a difference. If somebody's going 100 miles an hour and, and you pull out in front of them, then this, the person that pulls out is gonna say, I never saw them, and it's because they were going so fast that you could argue that that's contributory negligence. Mm -hmm. um, it's typically a question that is presented to a jury. So it's not, you know, when, when cases are, are filed, insurance companies may, you know, assert the defense or deny based on the defense, um, but it's not really, in play until and if the facts are presented before a jury. But it seems like this would be pretty commonplace, so I'm very shocked to hear that Alabama is one of the few states where this right. happened. Well, really other states and, and across the nation have, have adopted what we call comparative negligence. And it's really a lot more fair uh, to the person that was injured because what it says is that um, you know, typically, it's, it's if one party is more than 50% responsible, um, then um, there, you, uh, they can still be held responsible for the damages, but the damages are reduced. So, if you have one party that was 70% responsible, and then the injured injured party was 30% responsible, then the injured party's damages would just be reduced by the amount that they were responsible. So that they get to recover 70% right. of their damages instead of 100%. We have a caller. All right, great. Joe, are you there? Joe? Yeah. Go ahead with your question. Pardon? Go ahead with your question. Oh, I, if you have a yard sale and somebody comes into your yard for the yard sale and trips and hurts themselves or falls, are you liable? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. So, so you're basically inviting someone onto your premises for a, for a business, for a, you know, uh, because you want them to buy something from you and you want them to sell, uh, you know, you want to sell something to them. So basically under those situations, you have an uh, obligation to maintain your property in a reasonably safe condition and to inspect for hazards and to warn about known hazards. So if you're going to have a yard sale, you want to make sure that your yard is in, in good shape and there aren't any you know, pitfalls or potholes or, or unreasonably dangerous conditions, ledges, things like that, uh, that are in the area where you're going to invite people into your yard. So yes, you can be held responsible. Your homeowners would pay uh, for any damages, but the best practice is to inspect um, and remedy any problems before you have a yard sale. Now we do have another question sure. from a text message. The person writes, does a client have to reimburse their insurance company it paid for medical bills from the settlement the injured party receives? Um, there's a principle called subrogation. And basically what it says is that 
If your insurance company pays for your medical expenses and then you go out and collect from another, uh, either the responsible party or their insurance company, then your insurance company is entitled to be reimbursed out of that settlement so that you don't collect from both insurance companies. They get their money back. There you Makes have sense. it. Makes sense. Sure. Yes. I want to thank you so much for coming on. We always appreciate that, having yep. you here and sharing your knowledge. And if you didn't get your call in today, call us next week. We're back here at the same time. We'll be right back.